And now we have Joe here with sports. So Joe, why didn't Chris Black uh, go to any other of the big name schools like Florida or Georgia? Well, I heard that you do have a story about him coming up, but um, also I'm really excited to hear about the Penn State riot. Yeah, there's a lot going on in Penn State and we'll let you know what's happening with Chris Black. Um, a receiver for the uh, First Coast Buccaneers here at high school. Um, so, yeah, we'll get to that. Cool. Thanks. Students from Penn State rioted in the streets of State College, Pennsylvania last night when the news broke that head coach Joe Paterno was fired after 61 years with the school. Along with Paterno, school president Graham Spanier stepped down in the midst of a child molestation case involving former defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky. In a year filled with college scandals from Ohio State to Miami to USC and now UCF, Penn State is dealing with much more. Sandusky is being charged with molesting eight boys between 1994 and 2009, at least one of which, according to grand jury testimony, occurred in Penn State football facilities. Current defensive coordinator Tom Bradley will take over as interim head coach on Saturday when the Nittany Lions hit the road to take on the 19th ranked Nebraska. Well, while a couple of UNF sports teams return home this weekend, the basketball team hits the road tomorrow to take on the 19th ranked Alabama Crimson Tide in Tuscaloosa. This, this starts a string of out-of-conference road games for the Ospreys, which include games against Florida, Miami, Ohio State, Kansas State, and Virginia Tech. Well, the Osprey baseball team released its schedule for the upcoming season, and it includes a pair of games against last season's national runner-up. The Florida Gators will visit Dusty Rhodes Field on Tuesday, April 3rd, and the Ospreys will travel to Gainesville on May 15th. The last time the two teams met in 2009, the Ospreys hosted and beat the Gators 3 to nothing. Well, the Jaguars return to action on Sunday after their bye week. The team heads to, to Indianapolis to take on the winless Colts. At 2 and 6, the Jags currently sit in third place in the AFC South, only ahead of the Colts. However, the division is still wide open. All four teams in the year with multiple division games. Also in Jaguar news, GM Gene Smith says he turned down a contract extension and will not sign a new contract. The Jags promoted Smith to GM in 2009. He's been with the team since 1995, and Smith felt that he did not deserve a new contract given the team's performance. Only head coach Jack Del Rio has a contract that goes beyond this season. His contract extends through 2012. Turning to action on the high school gridiron, UNF Weekly's Sam Hauser introduces us to a First Coast wide receiver that's trying to catch the attention of some college football's biggest programs. First Coast High School receiver Chris Black is one of the most sought after recruits in the country. Of ESPNU's top 150 college prospects, Black is the 6th ranked recruit in Florida, 21st overall in the country and the number 2 receiver. He is committed to the University of Alabama and with the Crimson Tide losing 4 wide receivers to graduation, Black says that he looks to become the guy to come in and make an early name for himself. And along with the open roster spots, the hospitality from the coaching staff was what really attracted him to Alabama. You know, before going down there and taking my first visit, you know, I really didn't know much about Alabama besides uh, Julio Jones and, you know, Mark Ingram, you know, that two, two big name guys. But uh, taking my first visit there, me and my parents, you know, we, we enjoyed it, you know, tremendously. I mean, uh, the coach, you know, kind of showed us a lot of hospitality and, you know, I just, you know, really felt the, the, the interest and love there, you know, just the whole atmosphere. So, I mean, that, that's what kind of attracted me to Alabama. When the Buccaneers take the field on Thursday, it will be Chris's last home game for First Coast. And as the game approaches, Chris acknowledges that the go-around has come to an end and that it's time for the next one, college. Yeah, it's kind of crazy thing about high school. You know, it's, it's, you only, it only comes around one time. It's pretty much the same thing with college. And, uh, you know, it kind of hit me. You know, all of the games this year, you know, I realize that it's my last time playing for First Coast this year. So I'm um, just going to try to cherish this senior night. It's my last, you know, one of my last uh, home games at First Coast. So, uh, I mean, I'm just going to try to cherish that and, you know, uh, you know, remember it. But of all the memories that Chris has had as a four-year starter, the one that stands out the most is going on the field every week and just having fun with his friends. Uh, just pretty much uh, coming out here and, you know, joking around and, you know, laughing with my teammates. we got a great group of guys out here. And, uh, you know, most of us have been playing together since ninth grade. So, I mean, that, that's one of the things I miss, you know, uh, you know, after leaving high school, just, just being around those guys. And Sam Hauser, UNF Weekly. The Buccaneers' final home game of the year is tonight against Mandarin. Well, now let's take a look at some of the high school football games this weekend from around the First Coast. 
As we just mentioned, Mandarin at First Coast. And now let's take a look at 6-3 Atlantic Coast at 7-2 Reigns High School. Very evenly matched and a good game tomorrow. Another good matchup, 7-2 Creekside at 8-1 Bartram Trail. The two schools are very close in distance and it will also be a huge rival. Well the, well, the weekend is almost here, but do you have any plans? So we have some ideas for you. Also, do you know the connection between sleeping and fish? More after our break. <laughs> 